Hey guys, a uh, little update on this IVT. I got a call by the owners. Well, I think I got some oil or something on my screen. Can you guys see through that? Yeah, it looks alright. Anyway, um, I had a call from the owners and they said, hey, what's the status? And I told them, I said, I've, I've got a complete parts breakdown from a ZF dealer. Um, you know, all I need to know is what do you want to do? And uh, they said, well, do you know exactly what's wrong with it? I said, well, not entirely. I said, I found a bunch of brass shavings and stuff and metal laying on the bottom of the case. Uh, I didn't want to go any further because I didn't want to, you know, ruin the core charge in case you, were, you guys were thinking about getting a deer one. And they said, oh, no way. We're not doing that. If He says, uh, tear it apart, find out if the clutch packs and stuff need to be replaced, see if the hydrostatic control unit and the motor needs to be replaced and let's see what we got first and then uh, we'll make a decision so uh we're gonna disassemble this thing guys uh, i started on it right now um basically i've took the pressure control block off which is your filter head assembly and it's got a million t25 torx head screws in it and the first thing you want to do is pull your this thing's got an internal gear pump like a charge pump on a if any of you guys ever had a, a automatic transmission apart um that's your charge pump okay so to get that off these are all six millimeter allen heads pop this seal out first and then this snap ring will be on there holding holding that inside gear onto the shaft it won't come off unless you do that and then you can take your torx head or your allens out pop that off and then you'll have to pull your t25 torx head screws out of your filter head assembly pull it off and then pull the rest of your um, six millimeter allens out around the perimeter and there's a couple and there's one hidden kind of down here in a recess pull that one out and then pull your uh, pressure control block clear off now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the speed sensors out pull this one out right here there's only one here and there's another one the other speed sensors right there and we'll we'll flop this thing over on its end and uh start uh, disassembling the IVT. Alright guys, get the light over here a little better. Well, this is our brake disc housing, we're going to pull that off right now. that out get her apart Pretty bastard anyway okay it's dialed on there so it's gonna be a little tight Here's pretty tight. It broke loose there now. I see a little gap there. or something to get in there. Find it here in my tool cart. Apparently I don't have it here. It's probably in my pocket. Alright, she's coming. She still seems to be kind of stuck down over here, but We got her 
one now. She's just tight on this one dowel right here. Right here, this dowel is really, really tight. Hmm. Gonna be in pain. Don't want to break that cast housing. I wonder if I can get a heel bar. Need to get something with a hook and get right underneath here. I just can't get the angle that I need to get here with as far as I've got. Okay, there we go. Right there is the magic spot. fit on them dowels, didn't they? They really tight fit. Okay. He's loose. I'll tell you what, that coveralls outfit that I got, they don't fix any of the holes in the pockets. I'm about ready to chew their ass. I'm getting real sick of that shit. Pay them guys $80 a month to take care of this stuff, and then they don't do their jobs. You walking around, you put your keys in your coveralls pocket, and half the shit falls out on the ground. Okay, guys. This is your these are your brake disc here, right here. This is called the BG. Okay. Nice and easy. Make sure we're not hanging on anything, ripping anything out. Pretty much just come straight up with it. It's going to be a little bit tight once we get up to this point. Four clutch packs in here C1, C2, C3, and C4. John Deere service manual, they quit at the brake discs. That's where they quit and then they say anything else is non-serviceable. So this, like I told the owner, I said, it's gonna take me a little while to take it apart and figure things out uh, on that because there is really no book for it. So I have to really, really make sure that I'm doing things meticulously and right and measuring stuff and making sure things are going back together the way they're supposed to go so there's our shift turret and you know guys it's just it's just clutch packs man and a hydrostatic pump and a motor that's that's really all there is to it I mean it's just if you guys have done power shifts it's a clutch packs a clutch pack I'm sorry to tell you but that's it is what it is Enough damn chain here, don't I? I don't suspect we're gonna find anything with a clutch pack. I got a feeling. A hydrostatic pump assembly. Now that we can get a better look at that stuff, now that that's out of the way, definitely want to get them packs apart and see. There's my bolt that I dropped down in there. Big roller bearing down there. Ain't much to that. 
I had a feeling this is where our problem lies. Is in this unit here. What do they got holding things here? Got a big Allen here, a big Allen here. And got some lines we're gonna have to take loose. Another big Allen right here. So there's three big Allens looking like they hold that whole assembly together. might have to flip it back over I'm, I'm, it's looking like I might have to take something loose on this other side to get this gear off or is it just a stationary gear and that's spined into it I'm not sure it might be like an idler like a reverse idler you see on a truck or something you know this uh, unit here I think is probably where a problem is gonna lie is in the hydrostatic control unit and I don't know got a hydraulic shop up there I probably won't tear that apart I'll probably take it up to Albert up there and let him just disassemble it and see if that's exactly what the problem is because I need to tear those clutch packs apart and you know really really inspect those you know we got a bunch of seal rings I just noticed right here we break a seal ring maybe and things went to shit on us or what Those don't, they're scratched up and scored up pretty good, but I don't think that's probably what caused our issue. Any snap ring or anything out here? Nothing that I can see. So, yeah. Let's get this line off right here. This is the pump. Obviously, this is the pump, and that's the motor. got to be yeah because this has got to be your servos that moves your swash plate and your pump this has got to be the motor side of the equation here something looks like it's scarred up right here I don't know what that, that is but... well guys I'm going to get I'm gonna get a pair of dikes and cut that tie there and then uh, basically this come on through? No, I guess not. Everything's going to be unplugged and pulled through the center. We'll have to cut this off, unplug these here. Take this line loose down here. And then uh, we'll take these three Allens out and see if it'll come past that gear, that high shot of control unit. Kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, guys. I just saw it. These, these are gonna, these are gonna be going to your your servos. Uh, these are electrical or hydraulic servo pistons. Um, there's just coils there that move the servo back and forth. Uh, and, and that could be a problem too. It could be have a coil burn out on the servo and not stroke in the swash plate. I don't think so because all the brass and shit that was laying in the case. But uh, what I wanted to say here is these are interchangeable. Uh, I looked at them and took unplugged them both, and I took the other one and plugged it into this one. It's yeah, that's not good. And you think they would have made that to where you couldn't get them mixed up? So you need to label these, or you know, make a memory note or write it down. There's two black wires on this one that's going to go to the yellow and the gray wire. And this one has three wires. has a brown and two yellows going into two blacks. So it's pretty hard. I think what I'm going to actually do, guys, is take a red zip tie here and a red zip tie here and wrap it around it. And a blue one here and a blue one here. And that way I know where they go. ZF has no problem selling you parts for these. Alright guys, so those three are out. I don't know how heavy this thing is. They don't look real light. You have to get special little numbers, ZP numbers for 
their washers. It's cute. grab the wrench, get that one off, and then we'll have to take this one off down here. And see if we can get a hold of it and yard it out of here. I don't know what size that is. Maybe an inch and an eighth or something like that. because it's ZF, it's going to be some metric shit. That wouldn't be tight anyway. Okay. So, all we need something to get that one off. This will work. Too bad you just didn't see a broken hose, you know. <laughs> well, there's a problem right there. It would make things life a lot simpler. I probably would still take all these clutch packs and stuff apart just to make sure. I mean, you're this far many hours into it. Even if you had a broken hose, you'd go, well, we better tear the rest of that apart and make sure, it's, you know, it didn't damage something when the hose came apart. Which we know there's something damaged somewhere. I mean that brass and stuff laying in the bottom of the case. Came from somewhere. Alright. So we got our servos unplugged and I think see like on those uh, 7830s there's some big plugs in the side of the case that hold the hydrostatic control unit into the into the case and you take those out. But this one's set up a little different. Well, it's got a threaded hole in it too, so why, why kill yourself? So, let me get this over to the bench, get a spot cleared off where I can tear it apart later, and then I'll come back. So, let me regroup. Okay, so, we got her hooked up. And it's coming right out of there. Oh, it's hanging up. Looks like we got a stub shaft down in there. Some kind of attenuator. Or, I don't know if that's an attenuator or. I can't imagine that being nitrogen. I think it's an attenuator is what it is. Hydraulic attenuator. Alright, who's making these things? I'm sure it's some kind of German name. Yeah, something I can't... Uh, Bruin... 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 Haas Hydromatic. Yeah, definitely German. Can't read the shit, can't pronounce it. Get this snap ring here off. Oh, looky there, we got a planetary set there. Looks like we've got a piston in here. It appears it's got to be some kind of piston. Hmm. Just some kind of spacer. It's kind of a goofy deal. 
Okay, so now we got a planetary set. Now what do we do? Okay, pull it apart, I guess. Shit. Really, is it that simple? Here. So we've got a snap ring here. We've got some set of disc here, another set of disc here. Alright, so we're probably gonna have another snap ring right here Still on me, quit rolling around. Right. Shit, this is easier so far to take apart than 68 RFE or something like that. There's our shaft it's coming right out. ceiling rings on that shaft. That output gear comes right on off there. Alright. We'll stand that up on end. I can get my light up here a little better where you can see a little better. Okay, so what comes out of there? Got that snap ring off. Just wondering what what comes out of there if that snap ring's not in there anymore. You'd think this internal piece would come off of there. Ain't really wanting to do it though. Yeah, this pressure plate's got to come out of there. This must be. Stuck in there. Let me go get a heel bar and see if I can pop it out of there. I think for right now, what I'm going to do is move on to uh, getting the uh, output side of the transmission apart. Because I mean, I've I've rebuilt so many power shifts in my life and automatic transmission cars. You'll see, you know, just the coloration right here. You'll see when they're burnt. But I am still going to take them apart. But uh, I just want to get the other one out of there and look at it. I'm not seeing anything obvious here on these. I'm, I'm almost positive that something something happened on that hydrostatic control unit is what happened. Hey guys, look what I found. Look at that bearing out right there. Wow. Huh, I wonder why that bearing went out. You gotta pull this set screw out of the case I just found out to get that out. That bearing is toast. What's this shaft look like? Does it have seal rings or anything out on it? I believe that's the PTO there. What is that? What is that running? That shaft. 
the hell is that running? You know what that's running, guys. Let's see here. What in the hell is that shaft running? Guys, I got that one side apart. It's just the color of the, the friction material on it, but they've got a wave spring in between every one of those. Yeah, there's wave springs between every one. They go up against the, the plates and force the packs to separate. Pretty cool. I don't really suspect, I'm just wondering if that bearing on that shaft could cause all the problems that we're having if it was not wanting to turn the transmission and the, you know, the computer was kicking it out, you know, it wouldn't let it move because it sensed that something between the input and the output side wasn't right. We'll go ahead and take this pack apart too. I think it's going to be identical to the other side. And I don't think we're going to find anything wrong on the packs. I'm just really wondering about that bearing. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that hydrostatic control unit up there though and make damn sure and have him look at that and see if he sees anything completely obvious with it. That would explain all the metal in the case, you know, that bearing on that shaft going out. Yeah, boy, I can't believe that thing. <laughs> Man, it is gone, isn't it? Well... Well, you wonder if that's causing all your problems right there. That fucker got hot too. I mean, that whole gears looks like somebody took a rosebud to it. Let's get this in the light where you guys can see this a little better. There you go. Look at that. Look at that thing. You blinking piece of shit. It is hammered. Boy, I wonder if that's causing all our troubles. You'd think it would have thrown a transmission oil temperature code too, you know? You would have thought. I'll get this pack apart here, and this will be our Ford and Reverse packs, what they call the direction turret. And I gotta go put it back in the press and compress this because all those wave springs in there. Guys, um I want to show you something been trying to figure out there what if that bearing could be causing all these problems we're having and i really think it might have i think we've got the problem solved i really do okay here i got the input shaft out all right the input shaft spines directly into the output side of the transmission just like so let me get the flashlight here all right so, that just turns this, okay? There's another, there's an either gear there in the middle, and that turns this gear, which turns this big long shaft, which turns the pumps, which turns your hydrostatic pump, which in turn turns your motor and, and your, and your uh, input side of your transmission, basically. So, what, what, what that's gonna do there, the only purpose this shaft has, this will spine with that gear on the output side the only purpose this shaft has is to measure output shaft speed you can see the output shaft speed sensor down there so what i'm thinking happened is that bearing that went out partially either partially seized the shaft or seized the shaft completely to where it didn't want to move 
and then the output speed sensor wasn't matching the input speed sensor and it would just kick it out. I really think that's what happened here. I mean, that thing is fucked up. I think it seized in there and it wasn't matching the input and output speeds and and it's it's first thing is it's going to default to back to neutral and it's not going to let it move so uh yeah that's pretty wild huh and it might have been seized so hard that it couldn't move it i mean it obviously it obviously smoked that thing something sure as hell wasn't right there but i mean just for you know just to check myself too i'm gonna i'm gonna take this thing this hydrostatic unit because there's nothing wrong with the forward and reverse packs there's nothing wrong with the directional pack or the there's nothing wrong with the directional pack forward and reverse and there's nothing wrong with the speed packs c1 c2 c3 and c4 there's nothing wrong with them but i mean i think it would be a wise decision while you're here to just go ahead and put in some new frictions on it leave your steels in there um Pull the clutch pistons apart, put new piston seals on it, and put it back together. And uh, I'll run this hydrostatic control unit in. And uh, there's no one to really ask, unless you guys know, unless there's somebody out watching this that's torn one of these down and and knows what I'm talking about. But uh, I mean, there's nobody I can really call to ask, you know, because nobody, the guys at John Deere, they're not allowed to go mat any further than then taking that bg disc off and pushing putting the bearings in it and putting it back on there then the rest of it's all reman so you kind of in the i'm kind of in no man's land here because nobody knows anything about them so but uh i really think that's what's going on so i'm sure i'll get some input from you guys and i look forward to it so we'll see you then to be the same on both sides it looks to be non-directional okay so now what do we got in here <sighs> another clutch pack Well, there's a lot of gap on that one, huh? Looks like you can replace this clutch hub and everything. The snap ring here pops off. I don't see any burn up packs yet. screw up let's put it over here so we don't lay it down on it and smash it pretty sure that the rest of this is just all gear train this is all your clutch packs right here
really don't see a lot of need to go any further. I mean, the ring gear, all that stuff looks fine. It's just a planetary is all it is. These packs seem to be fine. The pistons must be in here. There's got to be pistons in here somewhere. Look at these clutch discs. Man, those things look like they're new. That's just unbelievable. That many hours. Hey, you guys on the automotive world with automatic transmissions, maybe you should take a few lessons. Learn how to build something that lasts like this. Nothing wrong with those at all. Now, how do you get this snap ring out of there? Because it has a retainer keeping the snap ring on there. That's crazy. Clutch piston must be underneath here, where this big snap ring here is. How the hell do you do that? gap in that retainer somewhere that oh I see Let's see I think I see anyway here's a little snapping right here that'll pull that off that's kind of a wild setup pick arrangement or something here. Hmm. 
Well, I gotta do something different. That's not working. 